Hello, I'm Pastor Paul, one of the leaders of the Estuary Elim Church Group, and this is my thought for the day. One of the best known Psalms has to be Psalm 23, doesn't it? Simply because it's the one that people rem come into contact with the most. They will at least have either heard it read or sung at funerals. So much so that you could be forgiven for thinking that Psalm 23 is a psalm only suited for funerals. When in fact it's more of a psalm to live by than it is a psalm to die by. It recently came to my attention again while singing a song in one of our Sunday Zoom meetings about the goodness of God. There is a line in the song that says, because your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And as we sang those words together, I immediately thought of Psalm 23 and verse 6, which has exactly the same theme. Surely goodness and loving kindness will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I felt overwhelmed by the idea that Father God would pursue me in this way. I also remembered the parable of the prodigal son, where the father sees his long lost son way off in the distance returning home, which tells me that the father must have been looking for his son probably every day. And then we have that amazing imagery of the father without any hesitation at all, gathering up his robes in a most undignified way for a man of his age and standing, and he's running all the way down that road to welcome his wayward son. What beautiful pictures we have of Father God's love for us. A Father's love that runs after us, that pursues us with his goodness and his loving kindness. Friends, you have a Heavenly Father who initiates this pursuit, not because of anything you have done, but simply out of his goodness and mercy. I don't know about you, but the knowledge that God loves me enough to pursue me even when I've more in common with that wayward son than I'd care to admit, and so totally do not deserve such love, blows me away. Yet this is what is at the heart of Psalm 23. We see a God whom David, the writer of the psalm, describes as my shepherd, with an immediate recognition that this fact alone for David meant I shall lack nothing. He will cause me to lie down in green pastures. He will lead me beside the still waters. I wonder how many of us would say, yes, please, that's just what I need today and would jump at the chance. Or maybe for you, it's a sandy beach, a hot sun and a gentle sea breeze that you could do with right now. But whatever it is, the kind of rest it really refers to only comes as we learn to trust the Good Shepherd enough to let go of our anxieties and allow him to lead us. He will restore my soul. He will guide me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. There's a footnote in my Bible that tells me what is meant here. It says it's more than just guide. It is also in a path of blessing. And I can just feel the Father's delight here. He's not only interested in guiding us in paths of righteousness. He's not just wanting to lay down strict codes of conduct that will keep us in line. His heart is to lead us into paths of blessing. Yea, when I am walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I will be awed by no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. I absolutely love this translation of that verse. And this was the second thing that came to my attention as I reread this psalm while singing that song about the goodness of God. And again, there is a footnote in my Bible which tells me that this is literally, I will not be in awe of any bad thing or anarchy. And as I delved further, I discovered that the word translated evil here is the total opposite of shalom. Now, when we think of shalom, we usually think of peace, but it means far more than that. It speaks of tranquility, justice, sufficient food, clothing and housing, divine health with no sickness. It is the absence of disorder, the absence of injustice, corruption, lack, hatred, abuse, pain, suffering, immorality. Well, this word is the opposite of all that. One writer puts it this way. It's when nothing makes sense or fits. Chaos 
or anarchy reign. It's when the bullies take over. Corruption and bribery are common. Freedom is restricted. Immorality is the norm. There is no order in society, no justice. At its worst, everything is wrong. It is an absolutely hopeless situation. So look what Psalm 23 tells us. I will be awed by no evil, by no bad thing, by no chaos. When everything that possibly can be wrong is wrong, I will not be awed by it. I will not be cowed down by it. I will not be overwhelmed by it. Why? For you, my Lord, my shepherd, my God, my father, my saviour are with me. Your rod and your staff, they will comfort me. The rod, at the very least, speaks of his protection and the staff of his guidance. And we can trust our shepherd for both these things. His protection is certainly demonstrated in the next verse. You will prepare, set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Well, that has to be a picture of the utmost security and confidence, doesn't it? In the presence of our enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup is running over. We see David here overwhelmed by the sense of God's presence and anointing and provision. He then says, surely goodness and loving kindness will pursue me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I once again come back to the song that started this thought for the day. Because your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Father God loves you enough, friends, to pursue you. And he's pursuing you today. Thank you for watching.